welcome to the show. I do hope you had an amazing time already. I know you've already had a couple of amazing speakers. I have been watching from my bedroom with the twins. They're currently 11 weeks old and they're so tiny and super duper cute. But you know, when I found out that I was having twins, I was thinking to myself, how great would it be for my show if they were identical twins? Wouldn't that be amazing? Like I would take one of the twins, vanish that one, and then appear the other one. Uh, but no, they are not identical, which is, uh, you know, my very first disappointment. But anyways, they're super duper cute. So I'm really, really happy about that. So I thought before we actually get into the, Im let's call it a Hogwarts show, because that's basically what we're going to be doing. I want you to warm up your body. So if you've been sitting down, I want you to stand up and just start moving and activate your hands just a little bit. So take out one finger like this on your right hand and then one on the left hand. So if you just take these fingers and just bump them together on three, one, two, and three, one, we're down to the other side. No? Okay, let's do that one more time. Now that you're ready, now that you know what's gonna happen. So it's one finger here, one finger here, and then one, two, and three, it jumps. It does take a little bit of practice, but you, you'll get down to it. You know, this is gonna be on YouTube and it's gonna be on the TED website later on. So you can, you know, go over this one more time if you need to. So there's a second part to this, and that is when you take the fingers like this, and like this, and you place them behind your back. And on one, two, and three, they are linked together. No questions? No, okay, that's good. All right, so for the last part of this warm up, I want you to take your palms of your hands face down, the hands right next to each other with the thumbs connected like this. And then you take your right hand above the left and interlace your fingers like this, so your thumbs down. So what is really important here is that you keep the hands up, so in one, two, and three, boom, the thumbs go to the top. No? <laughs> so I have my monitor here and I can see you guys are struggling, but that is fine. So I think we have a volunteer for me. I think it was, is it Disha? So I want you to imagine just one card in your mind. Think of a card. So, you know, you have the hearts, you have the diamonds, you have spades and clubs. We have the ace you know, and two to 10, jack, queen and king. I want you to decide on one of those cards already. And I'm going to make my choice. I'm going to take this one right here and place it in the other way all right so now disha do you think it's a red card or a black card it's a black card. it's a black card interesting so that's well 50 50 really do you think it's a club or a spade speed spade interesting do you think it's a high or a low card uh i think it's uh like high cards are the king queen and ace they are indeed, yes. Are the numbers? Oh, well, I'd say from seven to king and ace is probably high-ish. So what was the card you're thinking of? The black speed of 10. The 10. <laughs> all right. Let's take all of the cards out. And let's see how you did. You see, in this pack of cards, there is indeed one card that is turned over. And of course... It's the Ten of Spades. Thank you. No? Okay. <laughs> no? <laughs> You're not impressed already. You know what? I'm going to make this slightly cooler. I'm going to bring in my second camera to have you see that it is indeed the Ten of Spades. <laughs> A big round of applause for Disha. Wasn't she amazing? So when I was only three years old, my grandfather started teaching me tricks. So my grandfather was a magician and my dad a politician. So I guess lying on the job was always encouraged. Uh, but when I was a kid, I knew that magic was real. Nothing was ever, you know, nothing was ever impossible. So whatever I thought of could happen. So I remember one of the very first tricks he ever taught me is a rubber band trick. So what you need for this is just one rubber band or a hair band or whatever you have. And the idea is to take the rubber band and place it on the bottom of your index and long finger. And with just a snap, it jumps to the ring and little finger, just like so. And I think it was three years old when I actually started learning this trick and I went to kindergarten, I showed everyone and no one was impressed. But yeah, now you are, so that's good. So anyways, there is a second part to this. That is when you place the rubber band all the way down and then, you need a second one to lock that in. You know what? We need a better camera for this. Let's use this one. Okay, so you can see here, the rubber band is interlaced on the inside, yes? So now, to be able to go to the other side, you would have to jump this side, and then over, and then down in between. Okay, so in just one, two, and three, it does. No questions? 
No? Okay, good. Anyways, so I think I was like three and four years old when I started learning this. And then my grandfather said, maybe it's time for you to actually start learning real magic because this, this is just sleight of hand. And now let me show you one of the actual first tricks that I thought of as really, really magical. When I learned this, I thought there was nothing that was impossible. So you need one of the rubber bands on the inside of the other. So you see here, we have the rubber bands interlaced with my thumb index finger. That means it cannot come out on this side. It cannot come out here, not here, not here. But if you just believe, blow a little, you can actually see the moment the rubber bands go through each other. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I can see your faces. This is absolutely amazing. This is one of my absolute favorite things about magic because it's a international language. Everyone loves it. And it's just absolutely amazing to be able to show this to you. Speaking of showing you something that is slightly different and really, really cool, I thought I'd show you one of the absolute oldest tricks in the book. This one is called the cups and balls. And this is something you can actually Google. You can find the secrets to this if you want. Uh, even on YouTube, actually, if you're watching on YouTube, you will be able to just Google this. Or YouTube. Do we Google this? No, YouTube this right after. Uh, so what you need for this trick is just three red balls. You need a wand, of course. You need three cups. And then you need, of course, a magician, an audience. And with that, I think we are ready to go. So the first ball you place on top of one of the cups. The other two cups go on above like that, and then you just snap it once with the wand. What should happen now is that the ball should go straight through the cup all the way down to the table. And it should have happened now. Yes. Let's do it one more time with the second ball on top. Snap it once, and the ball should join the other place. To make this slightly harder, we're going to place the cup, the ball on top of two cups like this, and then one cup above. But before we do, I know there's a lot of people thinking, Caroline, maybe you're cheating, and maybe there is like a hole in the cup or something, but there isn't, because if there were a hole in the cup, it would look something like that, and there's no hole, you can trust me. Okay, so let's go back to the right camera. So we take the third ball on top of the second cup. We need to tap twice now. So one, two, and the third ball should join the others like that. All right, let's make this slightly harder by taking a ball over here, twist it, and what happens now is that the ball goes through and then walks all the way over to the cup over here, okay? Just like that. Okay, let's do it with the ball number two. Whoop. There we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. So let's make it slightly harder with the, with the third ball. Let's take it like this. Use the wand, snap, and it would vanish from here to appear right down here. Oi, no, no. Oi, <laughs> they were stuck together just like so. But what a lot of people don't know about this trick is that you do need, in fact, three cups, three balls. And um, I'm pretty sure you didn't notice, but I did. I did add a little bit of something here uh, to be able to make this trick work, and it should be right here. Yes, that is, in fact, the ball that we needed to make this trick work. Anyways, so one of the coolest things with these balls is that they are somewhat connected. So let me show you what happens with one of them. Let's see if you can see this so I don't have anything in the way. Okay, so we have the balls right here. Yeah, you can see them. Good. So let's start with one of them, actually. So let's take one of these, vanish them just like so. And then we would take another one, and we need a better camera. We would take the other one, place it in the hand, rub it a little, just like that. We should have two, yes. <laughs> and and it's with this one, they are really, really attached to each other. So whatever you were to do to like try to keep them apart, maybe take one and place them here, and the other one here, you can actually see the moment. This one jumps invisibly, of course, all the way up to his friend. Yes. <laughs> I do love my job. It's the absolute best job in the world. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. Anyways, so now I thought I'd show you something that I have been working on, I want to say, maybe for two years since the pandemic started. I'm going to show you the close-up version of this as well. All right. So we need a card selected. Actually, I have my favorite card 
we can use here we go this we can use we need the seven of hearts and we're going to need another card that i have already prepared because i wanted to have some contrasts so we're going to use one that is the seven of hearts this one we're going to bend in this way and then this way okay so we need the seven of hearts to be like that okay so that one we need and then we also need a, stick. I need a second camera here here you can see so this one we're gonna just bend one way like so okay now so let's take this card here and place it inside of the seven like that perfect and wrap it around so the idea now is <laughs> and i don't i don't even know if this is gonna work so okay let's go let's go okay so here we are the idea now is to take the card the seven of hearts and just squeeze it through the card on this side to make a turn and have the back come out on the other side let's see if it works Ah, oh, there we go look at that isn't that amazing <laughs> okay of course we can take it the other way around as well it should be able to come back just like that all right but a lot of people are accusing me of using extra parts so you know what i'm just going to bend these corners in so you will be able to see the exact moment where the card is in fact changing so let's fold this one down and this one too here we go Oh, look at that. Isn't that just a perfect illusion? Oh, yeah, there we go. All the way back. Yes. But now if I wanted to just stop here, I could. I could just take this yellow card here and fold it like this. Nothing extra in my hands. And you can actually see that if we just squeeze it over, rip it apart, the seven of hearts on the inside should be forever twisted with one part like this and the other one like this endless of possibilities when you know how the magical world works isn't it so actually one of my favorite tricks anyways DJ, so i was thinking we could do a card trick where uh, we're going to find your card but not in like the traditional way because most of the times magicians would you know ask someone to pick a card and they would pick one and the card would race to the top um actually do you have a favorite card instead of you know the ten of spades do you have one that is your favorite Okay, so I need to think of it or do I need to tell you? No, no, it's fine. We can actually use the Ten of Spades if you want because you already thought of that one. Let's see if we can find... Do you have another one in mind? No? Not yet. Do you want me no. to think? No, it, it's no worries at all, actually. We can actually use the Ten of Spades because this, the Ten of Spades, is one of the absolute best cards in the entire pack. And I did not tell you this before. But the thing is, if we just take the Ten of Spades like this and we place it in the middle, what most magicians would do, they would just snap their finger and the card would race to the top. It's not a perfect trick, but it's kind of a cool trick, you know. We have to double check. There is no extra ten of spades in here, is there? There should not be. Let's double check that. There is one nine of spades. There's one ten of clubs. Really, really close. There should only be one of the tens of spades. Let's do that just one more time. We're going to take the ten of spades, make this slightly harder, push it in, and add a rubber band on top. So now the idea would be that the card is not on top. Oh, we're close, close. Nine of spades, not on top. It should not be on the bottom, but somewhere in the middle. So Disha, do you mind just telling me when to stop? Okay, sure. Here? Okay. So not here, not here, not on the top. But in just one, two, and three, I'm going to drop the cards, and one card should fly out like that. And this... Ladies and gentlemen, it's magic. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Disha. Thank you so much for having me. I do hope you enjoyed the show and that you're going to have a really, really magical rest of the event. Thank you so much for having me and I hope to see you around.